when you're, I, I've been guilty of this though, where you do an MV over Drifting directories and that, and afterwards it's like, oh crap, I shouldn't be doing this because it, you know, it can be very bad if something happens along the way. Um, again, our sync is very good for moving very large files how, across. How does our sync um, remove the original, the duplicate at the MV command? It doesn't. Okay. You're still going to have to copy it over. And then do an RM. Yeah. But again, it's going to be a little more efficient about how it does that. You can tell it to delete after. You can. Can you? I'm not yeah. sure how you would do that. There's a there's a flag. It's like delete. It, you can have it delete contents that aren't in the original folder, or um, it can delete after copying. Okay, I wasn't aware of that. Hmm. I'll have to do one again. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. So I'm. Um, I'm, I'm trying, trying to figure out what you need to do to set this up. Do you have to have a port open? Do you, you know, are you using just SSH or, you know, you what is it? Use SSH. You can use it on a local machine. Um, right, just directory to, to directory to directory. Um, I, I didn't go over one of the things that kind of trips me up a little bit, and that's where to put the slash at the very end of it. Um, I can talk about that. You can talk about that, yeah, please do. I always put the ending slash on directories. Yeah, well, there's, if you put the ending slash on there, then it will copy the contents of the directory. If you right. don't put it on there, then it will copy the directory. But only if that directory doesn't exist. And it could, I, there have been times when I've had to move things afterward because I, I went to lo directory yeah. levels too deep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, anything else? Uh, I'm ready. All right. So again, uh, use the right tool for the job. <laughs> Make sure you update your tools. Your use our sync, and there you go. Use our sync. Yeah. So That's thank you. Hopefully, I can just plug in. Right. <laughs> That's the goal. Sure. Everyone else was able to. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you go. Ah, wow, it's even quick. Just went to the Linux community like 15 years to make that happen. Right? Uh, okay. Uh, everything Craig said was awesome. Thank you. R-Sync is a great tool. Mm -hmm. um, I find myself copying occasionally very large chunks of data. Uh, by large chunks, I mean like uh, databases of 150, 200 gigs. Wow. And when I have to move that kind of data from one machine to another, it's not a fast network, it's a gigabit network, uh, but it can take like an hour and a half to move a 200 gig file. That's, that's, a, that's a long time when you're waiting for things to happen. And I started looking at why it takes so long, because if you do the math and look at 200 gigabytes and how long well, it should take on a, on, a, on a gigabit network, it shouldn't take all that long. Well. What Craig was saying about using SSH is true. There's a lot of overhead with SSH uh, because it's encrypting the data. Uh, I think it compresses the data. Depending well, on your connection, it'll try that. Yeah, uh, and then of course rsync, you can compress the data uh, with, by adding the Z option. Um, there's a lot of overhead for moving files in a, or I don't need to use SSH. I've got a data center and a couple of machines in the data center. I'm moving these big files, and I just want it to be fast. I don't want to sit there and wait all that time for that data to move. Sometimes I, I might be wanting to take a snapshot of a database. I shut down the database, I push the files over, and I want to bring the database back up quickly, and I don't want to wait two, two and a half hours for that to happen. So, our sync D to the rescue. Uh, what I've got here is uh, a couple of machines. I've got, uh, I, I'm connected to my data center now. machine called DevServe 2 and a machine called Jamdev. Um, and uh, I could easily just do, you know, I could take a big file and I could easily do an SCP of big file, whatever it's called, to Jam at uh, uh, Jamdev. And I can copy to temp, right? Yes. Can you see that all right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, uh, that's kind of like the... Uh, so that's like the old way that I would have done it if I had a big file like that. Usually with a database, it's not just one file, it's a lot of files. Uh, you copy a Postgres database, and if you have a couple of hundred tables, it could be several thousand files.
files. Uh, so SCP, is there a recursive mode for SCP? I think there is. I think, yeah. I think, I think it defaults to recursive, depending yeah. on if you give it certainly, a Okay, certainly you could use that, right? But I, I, wanna, uh, I like using our sync. Uh, so what you do is, um, let me see if I have our sync. Yeah, I'm just going to kill, uh, uh, let's see. Sorry, it's a dash R. It's a recursive. I'm killing because I wanted to show you how to start it. Um, uh, one of the issues, uh, well, first of all, there's a configuration file for our thing. There's a config file for rsyncd, etc rsyncd.com, okay? And I've created a, just a very simple configuration. Um, uh, in order for rsyncd to work, you have to tell it what it's allowed to access on the, on the receiving end. So I created an rsyncd.com file in etc. I gave it a name, that I think in rsync language terminology, they call that a module, uh, gem temp. Uh, I put a comment on it. Uh, I give it a path, I tell it uh, I don't want to use true, uh, and it's not read only. Uh, and then you can put in a host allow, host deny. Uh, any Samba users out here? Yeah. It's an awful lot like a Samba config file. Yeah. Yeah. There's a reason Samba was written by the same guy, our sync was written by the same guy that wrote Samba. Was it? Yeah. yeah. Tr uh, Trigel. Oh, is that right? And oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so the configuration is uh, same. nearly the same. It's, right? With Samba, you give it a, a, a name in brackets and then some options for that name. Right? Kind of like an I file. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a mini file, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, so that's my config file. Now, I haven't tested this config file to see if it works, but that basically is saying what, uh, this, is, this is my receiving end. That's basically saying what, uh, what rsyncd is allowed to access on the receiving end. Basically, I'm just going to write to temp. Uh, I can restrict what hosts are allowed to write to it by putting their IP address in on the host allow. I can restrict other hosts definitely from not writing to it. I think the, the default is allow it, allow from all. Uh, if I want to do allow from all, but then uh, restrict it to not allow certain hosts, I can put it to deny. Uh, so the way you start rsync d running is uh, rsync dash dash daemon. There's a way to set it up in an, in an RC script. So it starts on boot, but then every time you boot it up, it's going to be running, and you may not want rsyncd running always. Right? So I start it up when I need it, I kill it when I don't. So right there, uh, rsync dash dash daemon, that starts the rsyncd running. Let's just make sure it's running. Is this a Ubuntu server? This is Ubuntu 12.04. Do they have a service uh, for rsync? Um, yes, yes, they do, and I should point out, I, I could service start and service stop, and I could not have it start on boot and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, but if you are, if you do want it to run on boot, you want to go into the D, uh, etc default rsync file and uh, rsync enable. You want to set that to true. Okay. Right. Oh. Whoa! Is it true by default? No. You change that from false to true. Right? So I'm not starting it on boot. Like I just started it with our sync dash dash daemon, so I can control when it runs and when it doesn't run. Uh, so back on the server, uh, on, on the source, this is the machine down here, DevServe2 is where I'm going to send my files from. So we need to go find a file that we can send, or a whole directory, I guess. Get in here. Uh, We can send that. Uh, so, what Craig showed was doing our sync dash AV IP. AVIP. IP. Um, uh, the directory you want to send, which 
was the SQL, uh, and then the destination that you want to send it to, and it would be, in my case, it would have been jam dev slash temp, right? That's the syntax that you would use uh, to do it over SSH. I don't want to do it over SSH. I want to do it over uh, using our sync D. So it's a double colon, and then the module name, which, uh, what did I call that module? Jam dev dev Caps. Temp. Okay, I did it right. That's going to copy everything in the SQL directory uh, into uh, temp on the other machine. Okay. So there's some overhead there, I guess. Um, no way. Handshake or whatever, because it may have something Yeah, it might have been a reverse lookup on the server side, looking, trying to figure out who I was coming from. Yeah. Anyway. But so doesn't it predetermine what it needs to transfer before it actually It will, but it's transfer. really fast at that. Okay. Well, let's go look at my temp directory and see if uh, see if I have a fix. Do you have an SQL directory? And it does have that file in it. Cool. So that copied it, right? Now, for a little tiny file like that, 976 bytes, it took uh, you know like 10 seconds to do. It's kind of a waste. Right? But uh, somewhere here, I have a spreadsheet. Did some timing tests. Can you guys see this all right? Mm -hmm. So I did some timing tests. I took a 20 gig file because I didn't feel like waiting an hour or an hour, right, two hours for a much larger file. So I took a 20 bit, 20 gig file. I copied it using SCP. And on a gigabit network, it took 10 minutes and 2 seconds at 34 uh, megabytes per second. rsync minus AVZ, that's uh, over SSH, <laughs> compressing at first, took 21 minutes, almost 22 minutes, right? Double. 15.6. Yeah, I was surprised it took that long, but it did. Uh, rsync minus AV, I turned off the Z, and that brought it back down to pretty close to the same mm -hmm. time as SCP. Yeah, true. 10% yeah. longer than SCP. Um, uh, it's using primarily the same protocol. SCP and rsync minus AV are both going to use uh, uh, SSH. Right? There's, there's a little bit of overhead though with rsync. 